Hello everybody and welcome to my cooking channel. Today I will show you a step-by-step -step way to make an Italian classic pesto alla Genovese. The most aromatic sauce with fresh basil, pine nuts and parmesan for an extra kick of flavor. Serve it with anything you want. And let's begin, this is a very basic recipe, so I will not make something else like a pasta or another simple dish with chicken. I will just show you how to make a perfect pesto alla genovese to have it into your fridge and ready to use for anything you want to cook. Now, to make a pesto alla genovese, actually you need five ingredients. The first one is basil, the second one is olive oil, Italian or Greek, okay? The third one is pine nuts, the fourth one is parmesan cheese and of course some garlic. Five ingredients. We don't actually need salt and pepper because we have all the saltiness from the parmesan and we don't need any seasoning if we make a proper pesto. Pesto coming from the word pestare in Italian, if I'm not wrong, which actually means um, smashing, okay? So you can make pesto with anything, with sun-dried tomatoes, with any herbs, but pesto alla genovese is this one, okay? Basil, pine nuts, parmesan, olive oil, and garlic. Now, how I will make a pesto alla genovese? Can I put everything together into a mixer, mix them, and the pesto is ready? No, because one thing I have to remember is to put all the ingredients gradually. So first we will add the garlic and the olive oil because we want to make sure that the garlic is completely dissolved. Normally, we need a mortar and pestle to make a pesto alla genovese, but we will have more chunky and uh, not smooth texture in our pesto. If we want a nice, smoothy and textury uh, pesto, then we will have to use our mixer. Now, I will use my mixer, but if you want, you can use your mortar and pestle if you want. And first, I will add my garlic. So I will chop chop my garlic here. And if you add one clove of garlic for this amount of pesto, then you will have a kick of uh, garlicky flavor to the very end. Now, I will add my extra virgin Greek olive oil because I didn't have any Italian, okay? And I will mix my garlic with my olive oil. Now, there is no garlic left inside the mixer. This is exactly what we want. The next ingredient we are about to add is basil. I know the amount of basil is quite a lot. Probably you cannot find this amount of basil. So if you don't want to use this amount of basil, what can you do, my friend, like is Use 20 or 30 grams of basil and the rest of them parsley. Okay, parsley is a good idea because we want the green color, but we want to have some flavor, okay? So, if you don't have this amount of basil, 100 grams of it, because this will be quite, quite tasty pesto alla genovese, you can divide the mixture with parsley, okay? Uh, now Italian people would say, no, what are you saying? Pesto alla genovese is made only with basil leaves. I, I know that, I'm sure you are right. Now, I have to mix everything together again because we want to make sure that the basil is completely dissolved. I will mix again, okay? Be patient. Now, at this point, I have to make sure that I will mix everything together. So I will take the edges from my mixer and carry on mixing because I want the smooth green, very, very tasty paste. <laughs> Now, as you can see, I have a lovely, nice paste here, okay? This is exactly what we want. Now, if we add the pine nuts and the parmesan to the very start, this cannot be happened because probably the mixer will be destroyed, okay? That's why we're adding gradually all the ingredients. The next ingredient we will add is what, my friend, like is the pine nuts. Parmesan goes always to the very, very, very end. It's the last ingredient. Go, okay? Forget the parmesan cheese. Now, the next ingredient is pine nuts. If we cannot find some pine nuts to the market, what we're going to do, my friend, like is, you will replace it. A good option is always what? Cashews, almonds. Another option is 
peanut butter or tahini to make it smoother, nicer, tastier. But if you want to make pesto la genovese, you have to use pine nuts. Now, pine nuts goes in and again, I have to make one more time a nice mixing of the ingredients. Now, again, So, till now we have this lovely paste. As you can see, it's very thick, it's not runny because it depends on the recipe. If we want to make a dip of pesto, then we will add a little bit more oil to become more, more runny. If we want to make a pasta and we want a thick pesto alla genovese, then we can add it into our pasta. It depends from the recipe. For me, it's better to keep it thick and nice and then gradually add more oil or what else you want. Now, it's time for the last ingredient of the recipe, which is the parmesan, okay? You can use some parmesan or half-half parmesan pecorino or even 70% pecorino, 30% parmesan. And this is an ingredient that actually, it depends on taste. Some people like the pesto la genovese to be quite aggressive and very, very salty. Some people like the pesto la genovese to be more smooth, okay? So that's why I have equal amount of basil, olive oil, and pine nuts, but for parmesan, it depends, from 50 to 100 grams. So I will start with 50, okay? And if you like to add some more, you can add, but the cheese will make the pesto la genovese thicken up a lot. So with 50 grams, you will see a different uh, texture now, okay? Now, mix and mix everything together. I will leave it with 50, I'm just telling you, okay? But if you want, you can add some more, okay? The Parmesan just did this lovely miracle. Nice, lovely, sexy pesto a la Genovese. I will leave it as it is. Now, it's time to put this lovely pesto a la Genovese in a nice bowl. And as you can see, the color here is green, but not as green as you want. Why, my friend, like this? If you pose the basil, you will have a nice green, more green color to the pesto la genovese. If you don't pose it, you will have this deep green color, okay? Now, this pesto la genovese, it's so sexy, so tasty, so nice, and I can use it almost in everything that I want. Pasta, chicken, oh my God. Lovely and amazing. Oh. I can live with that pesto. To a sandwich, to whatever you want, because it's thick, spreadable, and nice. That's why I'm not adding a lot of oil inside this mixture. But if I want to make it more runny, what can I do? I will add a little bit of more oil inside, and I will make it straight away more runny. It's a different uh, ingredient. Now, this one, will go straight into my fridge. How? I will top up with a little bit of olive oil to keep it fresh. This way, you will keep it fresh for a few days inside your fridge. I can say weeks, but I will not because, you know, it's not right to say that. But I will put that in my fridge and I have fresh pesto for up to 15 days, almost 15, yeah? And the rest of it, which is more smooth and more runny, I will put it here because I would like to serve it with some sort of dough bread and invite my friends. And the only thing you have to do, guys, is to dip this lovely pesto with your bread and enjoy. This is it. If you want to make this recipe, it's very easy to follow, just Check the ingredients to my website, iexpertzigs.com. Make comments under the video, share this lovely recipe with your friends, Italian people, don't hate me, please. I love you guys. And uh, what else? Follow on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Viber, and TikTok. See you next time, bye bye, yassas.